In the last video I showed you how to build the SID Kick Pico, a SID replacement for the C64 that is based on the Raspberry Pi Pico, has one of these boards on the underside and can actually store programs, not just games, any program you like, which is a PRG file, you can put on here and you can put up to 16. Today we are going to take this and turn it into a stereo SID chip. For this we need this little deck board which is a digital analog converter and this just goes on here. Oh. This just goes on the board like this, gets soldered in and we have to make two connections to the CPU um, from this board here and off we go. So let's do this. This video is kindly sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you, PCBWay. Before we start, in the last video I just showed you this board here, which is the one without the deck on board. There are actually two versions of this uh, Sidkick Pico boards um, available on PCBWay and I have the one without the deck, so I... I'm so I need this little deck board, but uh, there's a new version or a newer version, version 2, for which there's also the firmware with the programs and all that stuff, which has the deck on board. I don't have these boards at hand. I have this and this and this does pretty much the same, it does the same. It's just not as compact because this just sticks out of here, but who cares? The C64 is closed anyway. So uh, yeah, I have put all this in the description of the last video, but most people didn't read it and commented that I did not tell them about the second board and all that. It's, it's in the description, but I will put it in this description too. So there will be two links to, the, to this board and also to um, the version 2 board. With that out of the way, let's now really get to building this. Okay, the iron is fired up. I have this package here which contains a lot of cables that we don't need. 3.5 mil audio cable, which we might use. And the star of the show, the audio deck. Or oh, deck, just. And it's this little board here. It has these connectors here, which go to the Sidkick Pico, and it has these connectors here, which are uh, labeled on the back side, which you can connect the um, audio out to. And it has the 3.5 mm audio jack here, which you can add to a speaker, an active speaker. And I have one of my Sidkick Picos here, which does not yet have one of those boards. And it's pretty easy. If you take a look at the underside of the board, there's actually some labeling that matches this one right here. And you can see if you turn it around, it matches perfectly. You just put it on here. And you can see that the SCK pin is free. So there's no pin in SCK. And then you just go and solder it in. And that is pretty much it. And then we put it in the machine and we test it. We have to update the firmware, of course. And that's it. That's stereo to the sit kick Pico. And then let's go and uh, update the firmware. And we need one that supports the deck and ideally the PCW because I don't always want to plug in something here. So this is USB mini again. I will plug this into my machine here, holding down the boot selector like this. Over remote desktop, you can see the RPI RP2 is here. And we go to the downloads, and I have the firmware. There's actually a new firmware, which is uh, 0.202, that is right here. And I have that prepared already, I think. Let's check. Pico patch. Yeah, I did patch it with a DAC and PWM UFK. Two, I'm not completely mistaken. 
for that. So if you want to have the PRG files in there, if you don't want the, the PRG files, you just go to ref1, which is this board here without the deck on board. And you just go and use the deck PWM UF2. If you want only to use the deck, you can use the deck UF2. And I'm using the uh, Pico, I have my own patch file here from video part from this video part one. And if we open this, um, why can't I open? Ah, yeah, this. You can see I'm patching SK Pico One Deck PWM, which is this file right here. And I'm putting all my PRGs in here, which are these. And I have my PRG list here. I can show you. It's the same as in part one. Just these are just references to the PRGs here, and the patch file takes this PRG, PRG LST file and gets all the PRGs from here and puts them into this UF2 file. And we can run the patch again, and you can see this just updated. Here's a file. You take this file and you pull it over to the Raspberry Pi Pico. It takes a second. And that is pretty much all there is to this. And then you have a hopefully stereo capable sit kick pico. Okay, ejects, it's gone. All is good. We remove the cable. Let me grab the C64, we put it in and we test it. Not sure if I did use this C64 in my last video, um, but I made a few changes to this machine. Most notably that I have already put 3.5 mil jack in here. There was a hole here uh, where the RF modulator was before. And I already have one of the Sidkick Picos in here, so, but we will try this one here. Ah, and of course we have to put the two cables to the CPU, which I have already done here. And this is the gray cable goes to pin 12 on the CPU here and just sort out one of these pins to the CPU. And the purple cable, which is the one down here, so the gray one is up here, the purple is down here, goes to pin 15 on the CPU. So that the SID chip can actually be mapped to an address. I will pull this one right here. And this is already connected to the um, audio jack back there. I will just leave it in there and I will just pull these two and put them on here. And then we will put this in here. And that should just work, hopefully. Put in the keyboard. Ah, oh, we need those here. We connect the speakers, which I have over here. This Logitech speakers should be plugged in and turned on, which they are now. Very good. And then we need video. And we need the power. And then, okay, let's engage. And here we are. Okay, um, so this is 54301 should bring us to, yep, right there. And now, as you can see, we can set the second SID chip here. And we take the, uh, which one do we take? We take two 8581s. Oops, that one was the wrong one. Like this. Um, and we have stereo balance and stereo width, and we can just make this a little wider and we press S to save and P should play now. And it does. Wow. This is pretty cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's one sound coming from my monitor here. Let me turn this down. This sounds awesome. So, how did I get here? And why didn't I just show you this deck I have on my... Let me show you quickly again. Why didn't I show you this, the one which is connected here? Because this is a board I bought on AliExpress. I actually bought five of these and they all don't work. And I was scratching my head and I was going mad because it just wouldn't fucking work. And now I bought this one here on, e and, uh, on Amazon for 10 bucks and it has gold plated um, holes for the pins and this has silver holes and this just out of the box you saw it in real time how I made this thing work just works it took me hours to isolate the error to this freaking deck boards from AliExpress so don't buy these on AliExpress they are cheap on AliExpress I know but they just don't freaking work man <sighs> This was pretty much, uh, this was quite the right here, so I'm very glad that it works now. But it shouldn't be like this. It really shouldn't be freaking like this. So let me add this three pin connector here, which then gives me the ability to plug the speaker on the outside of the case. And uh, yeah, then this is pretty much stereo now. Ooh. Okay, I added the, these three pins here and now I can just go and take my cable from here and bring it over here. And then hopefully have this outside connector connected. Let's see, let's plug it into this one here. Let's see if we still get sound. I have to remove this board here because this is just shitty. Setting is still good. And yes. Just works. Yeah, this is the craziest part on these projects. If stuff that just should work out of the box just doesn't work and it makes your life so much harder because you, I tried every firmware again and again the uh, external sit only internal sit stereo mono what the freaking fuck ever just didn't work and then I went the route and said okay I buy another one from a different source and let's just see and that just did the trick so that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed listening to some sit tunes and um, yeah as i said it's it's easy to build ah, yeah, there was one more question that was hey how did you get to the sub eight euro price for this do you get any discounts and no i don't get any discounts when they calculate the price it seems that there's some variance in there because of prices of parts and stuff but um, yeah anyway you might want to get the v2 board the one with a deck on board because it's, it's a little better footprint just like this and you don't have the hustle to get these little boards as i said these are not the greatest if you buy them on aliexpress they are shit and you can i think you can spot it if they they have silver contacts just don't buy them the gold ones seem to work fine but uh, i don't think they are available on aliexpress yeah, so anyway, um, thanks for watching as always and until next time, cheerio. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need any PCBs, pre-assembled PCBs or 3D printing, please use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time. Bye-bye.